Good morning, folks. Atmosphere turned off on Stellarium to see how Mercury came in to conjoin the Sun today. Let's quickly run through the next few weeks, see some of the other geocentric solar conjunctions coming up. Later in July, we will see Jupiter conjoin the Sun, just as the Moon is conjoining Venus. After that, the planets are clustered there for a couple of weeks. Too bad we won't be able to see this with anything other than satellite images due to the glare of the sun. Top stories coming up. There was an Earth-directed filament release that we will fully diagnose near the end of the video. The earthquake uptick we mentioned yesterday waited less than an hour after the morning news to pop a 6.4 in Vanuatu and slightly smaller shaking across the Pacific. Sticking with the alert map to come to the UK where they are readying to turn this nuclear facility back online. It has been plagued with trouble since its shutdown, more than doubling the expected downtime, but they claim no radioactive material has been released and hope to restart the plant soon. Top article of the day comes from the SLAC, the National Accelerator, and they are showing the hidden properties of water just before freezing as it's approaching these extremely cold temperatures. For some perspective, this is the equivalent of last year's super critical water breakthroughs, merely on the other end of the temperature spectrum. Folks, as I come to suspiciousobservers.org and click storms to get to our Uyen system tracking, I will now challenge anyone and everyone whose harsh critiques flew before we had even tested the hypothesis. Tropical storm records and space weather events are two of the easiest things to verify, and this system has been incredible, on point, Perhaps the good doctor will be writing another paper soon. Storm zone in the United States tonight is sparse, much less of a threat than it was the last few days. Let's go around the world with a precipitable water overlay. You can see two bluer convergence lines on the leading arcs of the low pressure systems there, south of the islands. Actually, Perth can take its eyes off the departing systems and turn right around and wait for the next one. There's still a formidable low in far eastern Europe. Convergence swings into Russia, while we have a high and low dancing in the North Atlantic with a convergence right on top of Portugal. You can see that today's convergence back onto South America is slightly weaker than it was the last few days. Also appears we have a line that has not quite reached South Africa, but could do so tonight or tomorrow. Back to the sun. This filament was one of two larger ropes spinning in to face Earth. As it released, a good deal of the eruption indeed lifted off into space and produced a CME. Even though SOHO is missing seven hours of this latest blast, we can still see a likely halo eruption, albeit small. The Enlil spiral is clear. They do expect Earth impact from the CME sometime on Sunday. The effects are likely to be minor to moderate. We saw a gamma ray burst last night, came out of the Fornax constellation. It was the highest energy we saw as the solar flaring was content to let the filaments do the talking for them. Solar wind is calm with only slight variability and absolutely no geomagnetic disruption to speak of. Looking at the sunspots, there is actually a sign of hope. The northern portion of the incoming southern active region is complexing quickly. It wants to go delta, you can feel it. One filament gone one big filament remaining. Keep that in mind while you briefly take in the moderate corona hole power to the earth facing groups. Now try to spot both the openings and the remaining filament here. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.